Off the coast of Yemen, in the Arabian Sea, lies the isolated island of Socotra, where hundreds of unique plants and animals have evolved unspoiled for millions of years. This island is something out of a fantasy or science fiction book, as lots of the plants and animals found here can be found nowhere else. And it's an extremely harsh desert habitat where so many unique life forms call home. One of them is an incredible tarantula species, Monocentropus balfori, the Socotra Island blue baboon tarantula. Now I acquired this beautiful female. She's just about to mold, hopefully. She doesn't look her best. But we acquired this female and we thought, nope, she needs a better home. Definitely a better home than this. So that's what we're going to do. We're making her a beautiful new enclosure. And boy, do I have some ideas. So let's get to it. This incredibly striking old world tarantula comes from a truly arid desert home. So we're going to have to make something suiting for our natural home range. So to build this enclosure, I figured we'd try and mimic nature as best as we can. So I'm going to be using the Exoterra Stone Desert Sonoran Ochre substrate. Now this is a tunneling substrate. You add a bit of moisture and it's like a clay that can compact so the animals can burrow within it. I've got some really gnarled, uh, cleaned oak branches. They've got that real unique twisted kind of rough look. That'd be something of that very harsh habitat. We have a nice old piece of uh, reclaimed wood, like a nice big knotty piece, something that looks real rough that's you know been exposed to the elements. We got some great stuff. We got some styrofoam pieces. And the theme for this tank is going to be something a little bit different than we've done before. This one is actually going to be called Unearthed. Now, what does that mean? You're going to see in a minute. Now, because this is actually an aggregate, this is actually heavy. This is a 22 pound bag. And just this is a little bit left in here. I have some more bags in the garage, but it's a, it's a very, very dense substrate. I do not want to pile it in here because we're looking at, we'll probably end up filling it in portions deeper than this section here, which be four inches and probably a bit deeper at the back. That's gonna make this considerably heavy. So I do not wanna do that. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to fill some of the spaces up to lighten the load a little bit. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna use some styrofoam pieces uh, to build certain things up. And then we'll build them up, get our kind of our escape set out. You'll see my secret surprise is in a second of what I want to do for this theme. And then I think we're going to go and use the great stuff. And uh, we're going to go and fill in all that space as well. You'll notice that it's got that foam background it's just stuck on the outside, mainly just for photographic purposes. We're actually going to cover the entire back wall with the foam as well. And then we're, once we scrape it away to almost nothing, we're going to cover that with the substrate as well. So it'll blend right in. It'll like you're looking off into the higher horizon, into the dunes of Socotra Island, and you're just going to see nothing but that sand. So let's get started. I guess I should let you in on maybe the secret of why I'm talking it on Earth. Well, it's such an ancient, primitive island. So I've basically done corpsing. So it's going to look like a kind of skull that's been exposed. It's been mummified and exposed in the environment. And then it's just kind of come surfaced. And then we've also got a nice gnarly looking hand. Skeleton hand with all sorts of preserved pieces of flesh still on it. I think it's going to set the tone and I think it looks super cool. So let's get to it. Okay, I like the way it's kind of setting up. But instead of going and using the great stuff right away, I think the thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go and have my placement all set. We already got pictures of it, so we know exactly where everything's going to be. 
But I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go and use some silicone. I always have some aquarium grade silicone around. And I think I'm going to attach those two pieces in place and these two pieces in place. And those are the dummy pieces, which are just uh, taking a bit of the weight away from adding all that aggregate in place. Uh, and then tomorrow, we'll come back once that's cured. And then we'll go and spray foam. The We'll do foaming of the background. We'll, and then we'll add in all the pieces. Because if we were to do that all right now, I think two thirds of it, we won't be able to access to actually clean up very well. So let's get, get this taken care of. Has finished expanding and I think it looks absolutely perfect for what I was the look I was going for we've got enough here that's uh, you know they'll hold the skull in place it's nice and firm same with the hand it's nice and firm in place there and then the backdrops not overbearing it's not you know, gigantic peaks and mountains and stuff so it'll be nice and easy to clean and everything we hear is have us in place now, I came up with the title of Unearthed for this, this vivarium build for this tarantula because it's just such an ancient land. And I just thought, you know, something like this with the, the sands and the, the way that the, the wind's moving on the island, that the sands are moving around and this ancient uh, hominid, this ancient human was unearthed just uh, out of the sands. Made it look in a way that it's actually trying to claw its own way out, fall, climb out itself, but... Overall, I'm getting pretty stoked about this build. And being a ground-dwelling or fossorial species, the Balfouri, uh, I also wanted to create all sorts of different areas, or let's say rooms, within the enclosure. So we've got spaces up here. We've got lots of space underneath here. You can see my hand can go right through underneath. You know, different sort of areas. The skull is hollow. We've got areas all in behind here. And this whole section back here is going to be filled up with that substrate. And that's going to taper right down in the front, right to the edge. Kind of the first peak. I think you can kind of see my vision coming together. I absolutely love working with these exoterra substrates and all the different variety within the textures therein. Now one thing that we always have to bear in mind is this is a large enclosure. This is an exoterra 18 by 18 by 12 high and I'm intending to put one female tarantula in there. I know full well I may never see her in this enclosure but this, com this is a species of tarantula that's well documented and known to be communal. Hence why I'm showing you all these different rooms that I've created within here. So once this female is ready and I introduce, and this is actually a proven female that has been bred before, we'll introduce a male, we'll breed it, and then she'll be able to raise all her offspring together with lots of different areas for the, the, the offspring to go. I've added some different cork tubes there. These will all provide different visual barriers for all the different offspring to be able to find a little place all to their own. Lots of little nooks and crannies all throughout the enclosure. Always thinking first and foremost about the animal that is going to be in the enclosure and making sure that all the needs of that animal are being met. This, uh, so what I did next is I actually, because 
there, you know, it, granted it's still a, an arid species, a fossorial species is going to burrow, there's going to be more humidity underground. So what I did is I made up some cocoa peat or core, uh, or any type of your, your loose moisture retaining substrate, I made a little bit up and I scooped some into the very bottom layers, underneath the different hides and, uh, and below and into those cork tubes. So if the animal needs to retreat to get a little bit more moisture for possibly for during their molting process and so forth. This will just make the enclosure a little bit longer lasting and better overall for all the animals. And then the entire enclosure was capped over liberally with my Exoterra Stone Desert Sonoran Ochre substrate. The same substrate that we used for the background and everything. And then we just filled everything in. This will allow this beautiful fossorial species to embrace its natural instincts and tunnel. As mentioned, these substrates are a special type of substrate, a special type of clay that with a little bit of moisture, when an animal tunnels, the tunnels retain their shape. I think it's coming together incredibly well. I love the colors. I think it's a beautiful contrast. It's a definitely a beautiful nod towards the, the natural habitat that this animal would see. This fossorial species would naturally dig to escape that hot Arabian Peninsula sun by day and come out at night to hunt. Here's the final look. You can see all the different rooms. I love all those different textures within that substrate. There's another little room there inside the skull. And again, it's filled right to the bottom with that substrate should they want to wish to burrow there as well. I love the nod with a little bit of different substrate stuck some different places within that, that mummified flesh of the skull and, and the hand. Love it when a plan comes together. I think it's time we show that beautiful female her new home. Monocentrophus balfori is a old world species of tarantula. And as far as old worlds, or baboon tarantulas, I find them fairly calm and easy to work with. However, we do have to be respectful that old world tarantulas generally pose a much greater threat should you be bitten. Their venom often tends to be a lot more potent than say any of the new world species. But one advantage of the old world tarantulas is that they do not possess any of the urticating hairs. And there she is, checking out her new home. I love how it all came together. When she finally molts, and that vibrant blue comes out again. I think she's going to be stunning against that background. So my friends, thank you kindly for watching again, and always your continued support. Should you wish, become a member of the channel. I do videos on fish, tarantulas, vivariums, plants, all sorts of unique builds. I'd love to have you. So as always, till next time, take care.